Good morning guys, hope you're well. Welcome back to the woodland. So today I've gone to my local woodland again, do some uh, more woodland photography obviously, but also uh, I bought with me brand new Fuji X-S10 as well, which I'm filming with right now. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna be using this camera today. Now this is not a review, um, I'm just gonna be using the camera today. I'm gonna be using it to film with as much as possible and also take photos with as well. So, you know, if you're interested in checking out what this camera can do, then, you know, a lot of the footage and photos from today will be uh, taken using this camera. So, yeah, I'm gonna try and find my first shot of the day, get set up and hopefully make an image. It's absolutely beautiful this morning, it really is. Really misty conditions, we've got hoar frost as well, and just the very, very last signs of autumn clinging onto some of these wonderful beautiful oak trees here so yeah should be a lovely morning of photography So it took me a while actually to compose this shot. I think it's a tricky one actually because there's a lot going on here and there's so much to photograph in this one particular spot. But what really drew me to it originally was the fact that we've got some really cold tones over on the right hand side and some very warm tones on the left hand side. Um, essentially what we've got here, we've got this oak tree which sweeps over to the left. And behind that there's another oak which sits in the, in the background there. But beyond the oak tree on the right hand side, there's some foliage, some ferns that's covered with a beautiful hoarfrost that we've got this morning. Um, now, the frost's not covering everything, it's just certain things, which is a, a little bit strange. I guess the more exposed elements within the scene are catching that frost. It looks really nice, but the light's coming through from the right hand side and it's giving this uh, kind of cool tone to the right hand side, but because we've got that autumn golden foliage in the oak trees on the left we've got that difference in color which is really what's drawn me to this scene so i've gone in really tight with my composition really to focus on the two different colors cooler tones sit opposite to warmer tones on the color wheel they really go together um, what i've decided to do is position some branches that split the image in half diagonally so they split the colors so it's a bit of a dare I say, abstract kind of shot, but um, it certainly looks nice in the back of the camera. Um, like I said, it took me a little while to compose this, just because there's a lot of branches sweeping through, there's a lot of different elements within the scene, but I wanted to try to find some balance and harmony um, within, the, within this very, very intimate scene. I think I've managed to do that by finding a very vacant space in the right-hand side, and then a very vacant space in the left top corner and then the sweeping branches that go di diagonally through the image. So I've got the XS10 here on the, uh, on the tripod. I've got the 50 to 140 lens on. I'm at about 60 mil on my uh, 50 to 140 at F9, and I'm focused on the branches and then just letting the depth of field fall away back into the scene. So I wanna get some sharpness in the back there, but uh, I don't mind if uh, that falls away slightly out of focus because there's some mist and stuff hanging around in the background too which is really really nice iso 160 um, i'm at quarter of a second we've got the two second self timer on um, obviously shooting in raw and uh, yeah i'm going to go ahead grab this one now and then move on see if we can find something else
One of the things about woodland photography is uh, probably one of the reasons why I love it so much actually is you can feel like you're not going to get another photograph for the rest of the day. You know, you've been walking for hours and really not found anything that you think you can compose into an image and then you turn a corner and all of a sudden something just jumps out at you and it's uh, such an amazing feeling actually especially when you're thinking about packing in and actually that's what I was doing I've been walking for a couple of hours and yeah I was thinking about calling it a day but then I found this wonderful larch tree here which is looking absolutely beautiful we've got some heavy mist as well lurking in the background and we've got a lot of pines behind us and those pines are giving a very uniform backdrop. But also, something that I've been looking at as I've been moving around this scene, um, there's essentially either side of this uh, central larch, there's two pines that are crossing over and they're almost perfectly symmetrical either side of the larch. And it was just a case of moving left and right here to try to position them right. It's very interesting actually, the fact that they're, they're almost identical either side of this beautiful larch which is so vibrant and orange it looks amazing and the mist as well which is uh, yeah really adding to the separation there in the background it's really helping that backdrop so it's all about the bright orange colors in the larch and those two uh, pines in the background either side that are crossing over creating those asymmetrical shapes and then all of the converging lines of the pines behind making that really simple backdrop I'm going to get the, uh, the Fuji XS10 on the uh, tripod now. Now, actually, before I put it on there, I've been using the kit lens, the XC lens. Now, I've never used an XC lens before. Um, these are the really cheap lenses that Fuji do. Now, the reason I got this, it came bundled with a kit. Um, it was only an extra 50 quid. Uh, so I thought it was worth giving it a go because it's so lightweight. It doesn't weigh anything, you know, really, really lightweight. So it doesn't weigh a thing and it's a power zoom as well so essentially when you rotate the zoom ring it helps for turn it on but if you rotate the zoom ring you know it's uh you can see it going in and out there it's uh yeah it's a power zoom as opposed to a manual zoom which i don't really like to be honest but for vlogging um i think it'd be quite good because it's so lightweight you know when you're walking around and you've got it on your capture clip or something like that you really want a lightweight setup and this is super lightweight i don't know how long it will last because it does feel a little bit cheap um, and I don't like the power zoom but um, if it makes you know vlogging more accessible if I can keep my camera out more if I can keep it in my hand or on my capture clip more it means I can capture more footage which essentially means I can create better videos so that's my thought process with it definitely giving it a go anyway it seems to be working out all right today but time will tell on the actual footage anyway I'm going to get it set up here and uh, tweak my composition a little bit more so it's took me a little while actually to compose this image because there's so so much uh, going on in the background i've tried to really fine tune it moving one way then the other to eradicate certain things in the image and the biggest difficulty is finding space either side of the larch to show those converging pines behind and also to get them evenly spaced between the main central trunk and uh, yeah, try to get them symmetrical as possible. So that's been my biggest challenge. Conditions are absolutely beautiful. Side lighting, which is really adding depth and dimension to all of these trees here. Um, the light's really warm, actually, really warm. Uh, it's got a real golden glow to it, which is really nice. But the pines are offering quite a cooler uh, tone to the image as well. The trunks of those pines feel quite cool. So we've really got a contrast in tones again, a bit like we did before on that image that we took earlier. And what I've done is I'm manually focusing on the uh, trunk of the central tree there um, on my F8, and that's just giving me enough depth of field to be able to get the pines in focus, but a little bit softer, not too much, just a little bit, just to help that separation as well as the mist changes. Um, got a lot of dying ferns in the in the foreground just behind this pine and some brambles too which add a little bit of a splash of green to the image got a two second timer on we've got the Viltrox 30 what is it 33 f 1.4 lens on um, which is giving me a really really sharp image that lens is super super sharp so anyway I'm gonna stop waffling go ahead to take this image now and uh, see what else we can find
Having a flippy screen is something I have wanted for an absolute age. It makes vlogging so much easier, it really does. So if you can just flip that screen out and compose your shot, it's, uh, yeah, just saves so much time, it really does. Because um, before what I'd have to do, is, literally I'd have to set my shot up, go and stand in front of the camera, record for a little bit, then go around the back of the camera to see if I was uh, composed yeah, properly. Uh, if I wasn't, I'd have to do another retake, test again, and sometimes it takes two or three times. I'd have to put a mark on the floor where I was gonna stand and everything. Now, I can just see exactly where I'm positioned on the flip out screen. So that's gonna be so valuable for vlogging. It's gonna make me wanna get out more <laughs> with a camera, which is always great. Some beautiful, beautiful uh, colors still in this woodland. I'm really surprised actually, because we're really coming towards the end of autumn now. Some beautiful droplets hanging onto these trees that are really appealing actually. I might, uh, I might stop here and uh, see if I can make a shot actually out of this lovely silver birch we've got here. Yeah, this looks really nice. This looks amazing, it really does. The sun has just broke through the clouds, <laughs> which uh, actually it offers another dimension to the image. Um, it really, really accentuates these beads of light, which are dangling off these branches, which look amazing. Everything's really, really damp. It's got this really damp atmospheric morning, which is absolutely beautiful. Beyond this silver birch, which is bending over to the right hand side, there's just some of the trees in the background there. It looks like a, an oak tree, a smaller oak tree. It's just got some of its uh, autumn leaves there. Um, biggest issue of what the minute is lens flare. Um, don't have my lens hood with me, as always. I uh, never bring my lens hood. Um, but uh, yeah, I think I'm just gonna wait for the clouds to come across a little bit, just to diffuse a bit of that light the minute it's too harsh. Uh, I'm not going to be able to expose properly for the highlights and the shadows, it's just not possible. So I'm just going to hopefully wait for a bit of cloud to come over. Um, still getting that gorgeous backlighting and uh, hopefully make the image. Now what I've got, I've got a couple of branches that sweep over from the right hand side um, and then frame the tree in the background. The tree in the background you can't really see, it's just there, you know, it just adds texture and colour to the background. It's all about the water droplets hanging on to these branches, which I think looks really, really nice. Just waiting for that light to dip now. Some amazing conditions right now. This mist is hanging here and the light is just incredible. But I'm going to stick with this shot. And uh, this one could possibly be my entry to the monthly challenge down in the photographer's clubhouse. Um, every month we do a monthly challenge. So uh, this month's challenge which is December is water so anything with water in it so um, these water droplets on these trees could be a, a good one so this might be my entry into the monthly challenge if you haven't checked out the photographers clubhouse guys please do consider checking it out the links up here and down in the description um, essentially we're building a community of like-minded people to um, essentially come together behind closed doors share our ideas uh, inspire each other and create some wonderful photographs together. So there's lots and lots of uh, stuff over there from my online classes to uh, yeah, monthly videos and heaps of stuff behind the scenes going on there. So yeah, if you're interested in joining the community, please do go ahead and check out those links and uh, yeah, it'd be great to see you over there. But anyway, back to the image, just waiting for that light guys. And then we're gonna take this one. I'm at F6.4. That's just given me uh, sharpness within these areas in the front there and then everything else is just going to fall off into the backdrop. So yeah, this is a bit of a different one, but yeah, I think this would be quite good. Ooh, what an amazing morning guys, absolutely stunning. This light and this woodland and the mist. Beautiful, beautiful conditions. Anyway guys, I'm gonna wrap the vlog up. Um, I am gonna be doing, well, not a review, but I'm gonna be talking about this camera on Sunday, giving my thoughts. 
I think uh, you know it's always a good thing to properly test out a camera before you know you share your thoughts on it. Um, never really understand how people can do reviews when they've only had the camera just like a few hours. So um, I've spent a week with this camera now um, and obviously been out with it today. So I'm going to give my thoughts on it um, probably on Sunday. So yeah, check out Sunday for uh, yeah a bit of a deep dive into the Fuji XS10. So uh, thank you so much guys for joining me today. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the like button, subscribe and all that good stuff. And uh, yeah, see you on Sunday. <laughs>